Bahrain wasn't the start of the season that we wanted or thought we may have following the winter work and the winter test. I think it's fair to say that we're all walking away disappointed from that event, knowing that there was far more achievable, either in different circumstances or with the understanding we have now. We'll break it down during the course of the questions, but very clearly we weren't able to extract the performance from the car with that overheating issue in the race, which I'll go into more detail shortly. And that was very, very costly in terms of lap time, in terms of the car then being very heavy from the fuel that was left over as a result of that as well. The second issue is that with Logan, we suffered a very significant and critical failure of the steering wheel that led to him going off the track. And again, items like that simply can't happen when you have a field of 20 cars close together and you want to make sure that you're optimizing every single millisecond out of the package. It's fair to say that we have a lot of learning that took place and a lot more learning that we need to get done very shortly and very quickly before we go to Saudi. Welcome to the Val's Verdict, presented by Kraken. On lap 10 of the race, when Logan hit the brake pedal, he didn't have the brake balance where we would normally expect it to be, which is in the region of high 50s, so perhaps 56 up to 59 or even 60%. The brake balance was actually in the 90s. Immediately, the front wheels locked up and he went off the track. Now, clearly, he didn't want the brake balance there, nor did we, for that matter. And we suffered an issue in the steering wheel that meant that there's a joggle that effectively allows us to set where that brake balance should be, and that wound itself all the way to the wrong region. It's an electronic joggle, so it was an incorrect response from it. It could have been very dangerous. I'm happy and glad that we didn't injure Logan as a result of it or cause an accident as a result of it. We simply can't accept that that happens. It's a critical failure and something that we will rectify for Saudi. In terms of why that sort of happens, the brake balance in the old days used to be a, a rotary item. It's now migrated to being a digital system. So you can fundamentally play around with the recovery on the rear axle with the MGUK and then play around with the hydraulic circuits in terms of the brake discs front and rear. And you can do lots of clever things like migrate which forces are going to the brake discs on the front and then to the rear as you go into the corner. So perhaps either to rotate the car more or less. So that's why it's a digital system. As for where it went there, we want the ability for the driver to very quickly go up on brake pass, perhaps forward a percent or backwards 2% because they adjust it multiple times a lap depending on what the corners are, depending on where the wind is even, perhaps whether it's behind them or in front of them. But clearly we've designed something poorly to the extent where it, it it didn't give him what he wanted out of the steering wheel. And that's something we will correct with immediate effect. Car too hot, put very simply, means that we're in a critical state on the power unit and we have to take temperature out immediately. Otherwise, you're going to damage the power unit or worse, fail the power unit. We can see that data as well from where we were. So it's not just a single mess of the driver. We could see which temperature sensors were going over. And we don't measure temperature on the power unit in just one location. There's five or six critical locations. And any one of those can trigger that message to the driver. The action for the driver is very straightforward. They need to, on the straights, pull away from the traffic situation they're in and make sure we get our radiators into clean air. So effectively, you get turbulent airflow off the cars in front when you're following them. If you pull to the right on the straights, which is what he was doing down the start finish, you're now able to get clean airflow through there, which is much better for generating cooling. But that's a state you never want to be in. The next procedure is the driver drops back from the car in front. So instead of being seven tenths or half a second behind them in a position where they can overtake, they drop back enough that at least the airflow now is not turbulent also through the corners to the same extent. Now, neither of these is desirable. We're throwing away performance. In the case of what happened in Bahrain, we set the cooling levels, which means how we close it down, louvers, taping, etc., based on long runs that we've done both in the test, but also from FB2. And that data we carried forward to the race, we have models that allow us to predict what's gonna happen when you're racing, you're in traffic with a number of other cars, what happens if the wind rotates, what happens if a number of different circumstances come forward. And for reasons that we are still investigating now, we were far warmer than we anticipated being. So much so that you saw that car hot, car too hot message on lap two of the race. So early on that you shouldn't be seeing those items. What it meant 
was that from then onwards, we were near enough throwing away a few tents a lap. That's the initial loss. Then on top of that, we were accumulating large amounts of fuel in the background because we couldn't burn it because we couldn't use the power effectively as we normally would do. So those are compounding effects that would have cost, by the end of the race, something akin to 10, 15 seconds of race time. And when the midfield is as close as it is, that simply means we're on the back foot. We ended up not racing cars we should have been racing, but rather surviving. And as a result of it, not able to compete either for points or for that P11 position where we were. What we need to do now is, as we go to Saudi, make sure that we have a containment in place. The problem has caught us out once, but won't capture us out a second time. With the car now far too hot in the power unit, it's critical we get the temperatures under control. And as mentioned, you can either drop back to field you need, you need effectively clean air, or at least the bare minimum on the straights, make sure that your radiators are getting the cleanest airflow that they can. So that's why Logan's engineer was asking him to do that. In the case of Alex, we're asking more to drop back to the cars in front, stop racing them and make sure we find clean air. I think it's a good observation that Logan did very well on those opening laps. And it's also an indication he was out of position in qualifying. Come to where he was in the race, he was fighting cars and overtaking cars and moving forward. And I think that's really a good demonstration of how much we've improved the package this year. Last year's car simply wouldn't have been able to do that. And we have a car now that you can trust under braking, that you can get close to the car in front, and it's more predictable, allowing you to race other competitors. Even post-stop, Logan's lap times were strong. He was in, a, in many regards a better position though as a result of things because he was able to use clean air, fresh air to get the power unit temperatures under control. But irrespective, he did strong stints. It was just by himself and without a safety car and without any reliability failures, there was nowhere for him to go. I think it's a good observation that we didn't get the strategy right in Bahrain at all. In terms of Alex, the thought process was that the degradation will be higher than it really ended up being on that hard tire. So the soft tire did have a good chunk of degradation, but we expected the hard to still mirror that. That's been typically the case in Bahrain time and time again. And when you go for the early undercut and push the tire, it tends to not respond well and degrade even more again. But that wasn't the observation we had here. There were a number of teams that did really good second stints of the race that caused the foundations and going late didn't pay the dividends anymore. So the reasons why you go late is you get everyone else caught into that race of stopping earlier and earlier, and they drop off the tire curves. It becomes very difficult for them to finish a stint two at strength and very, very difficult at stint three. And you can come back towards the field and overtake them. And you saw that somewhat. There were a number of cars towards the end of the race that were really suffering, and you saw all the gaps closing back down, but nowhere near to the extent required where you can claw back where you need to be position-wise. The second issue is that we had a car that could have been quick enough, but with the PU calling not where we need it to be and the systems turned off, the car actually got slower and slower throughout the race as it built up these fuel stocks and we didn't have the, the power required to be able to overtake cars on track, so we were caught in a train. So the going long strategy can work if the degradation's at the right level. We didn't predict that correctly. And furthermore, if you have a car that can get close to cars in front and overtake, and as you can see, we didn't have the package that could do that either. There's very little time between these back-to-back -back races and, and we've had teams working all the way through the weekend. So we'll see it was a Saturday race, but Sunday is still a day that we have to absolutely optimize everything to get it right for Saudi. There were too many problems over that first race to do otherwise. The motivation comes from this. It's not the same situation as we've been in previously. We have a foundation and a package that is able to do very well in the right circumstances. And we didn't get everything out of it at all in Bahrain. Between the PU issue, we didn't get everything right strategically either, even with the PU issue in place, and other elements of the setup that I'm still convinced were not in the right window on, those all add up. And what it means is the motivation we take out of it is get these items right and points are possible on merit with all cars finish. And that's where we have to be. We have to be going into every weekend believing, thinking and executing perfectly in order to get a point out of it. And that's how a championship will be. It's a very, very close midfield with many teams within the same millisecond. So it's the team that gets it all right, perfectly executed. The more weekends in a row will be the one that's successful.
The short answer is, is no, because we can be nothing but dissatisfied with the fact that we, we didn't finish where the car could finish. So is the package a strength over last year? Yes, undoubtedly. There are foundations that are now correct within the car that we have. We have a car that we can balance, we have a car that we can work with, a car that even was so good, it caught Alex and Logan by surprise on lap one of the race, how late we could break and how much we could fight with our competitors. These are all positive signs. The negative is that we didn't exploit all of that to get the most out of it. We didn't finish in the race where we should have finished with a car as strong as that. And these are all positives because I don't take them as blame or otherwise. They're, they're failures to get everything perfect that we use to become stronger in the future. And as long as we treat them the right way, and we will here, and use them to bolster what we're doing, to rethink what we're doing, to make sure that we're actively developing the car in the right way, we will come out stronger in Saudi, and then we will come out stronger in the races that follow. I think really building on the last question, disappointed, but disappointed because I know we can achieve so much more together. I'm happy that we've done quite a large change with what we're doing technology-wise in the car, but now that you're milliseconds away from, from really being within points, it, it's even closer than it was before. It's about getting everything right. And, and the disappointment, as I say, is we didn't. We definitely didn't. Go back and race in Bahrain again tomorrow. I know we can do a better job than that. And we need to make sure that we're not walking away with weekends where we know how to get more out of it, but rather weekends where we know we have extracted the full potential of the package. The main focus is making sure that we get the cars to Saudi Arabia, that happens, get the cars built and everything done. It's a very short space of time. There's also thousands and thousands of channels of data from the previous event, and we need to go through all of the key items of performance on the car, from balance, setup, how the drivers perform, starts, pit stops, tire exploitation. Did we get everything right? What we didn't get right? How do we rectify and fix for Saudi, given it's a completely different track and different conditions? But that learning is how you become stronger very quickly. And we have a lot of learning to do. It's a completely new car for the purposes of how it responds, balance and foundations. But we don't have a lot of time in order to get the most out of it. I think the important part of that question for me is, do I see ones that are going to be very difficult? Very clearly last year's car suffered at quite a few tracks. And I'm not seeing the same characteristic from this year's car. I think we have a car that shouldn't suddenly fall back to being last and number of tracks, we should be able to even go further forward than we were at Bahrain. There's some elements that didn't suit the car. But as for tracks that will, will absolutely be the best for the car where we move forward, it's hard to predict that at the moment after just one race. I'm sure there'll be some prizes of the years where we didn't expect the car to be as competitive as it was like last year, and we'll learn something new about the package. But right now, what I can see more is a, a car that should be a little bit better across the entire season.